Um, we now have John Sackett. Please join us. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Um, I've really enjoyed the morning sessions. Um, I feel a tiny bit of a fraud, actually, standing up here, um, because my kind of involvement in terms of digital has been one of the speakers this morning, I think, mentioned the fact that um, it started to, to become incredibly involved in terms of events, arts, and participation, whereas I predominantly just used it as a marketing tool. Uh, nevertheless, when Roger asked me to, to speak today, thank you, Roger, I kind of thought, well, in terms of my experience of events um, and what I've been involved with, I believe that events in public spaces have a lifespan which, in terms of public spaces and private open spaces, you can kind of quantify. And I think that might be of value um, to people involved in the arts, either as businesses or as artists. So I'm going to press on. So this, th th this is the boring bit. This is me. Uh, I run my own business called Big Adventures. Um, it's been in existence for just over a year. Prior to that, uh, 25 years of en event management experience. Uh, and the last 12 years, I'm going to flip right to the last point. I've worked within Land Securities, who are one of the biggest property developers in the UK, um, and run shopping centres the length of and breadth of the UK. Uh, but I've managed to, both within there and in my own private business, I've worked predominantly in the outdoor events sector. Uh, I've worked on international events uh, and community-focused events. I've worked with some of the, the largest outdoor event companies in the UK, Connecticut, Walk the Plank, um, as well as perhaps some of the, the smaller, more interesting companies. I've worked with the sporting events, Volvo Ocean, Yacht Race, Tall Ships, etc., etc. So that's the kind of boring bit, I think. Uh, okay, the, fir <laughs> the first facts, are perhaps, of, of, of what's happening in the events industry today. Um, events and culture bring 12.4 billion to the economy. If we look now at the creative sector, and this is really interesting in terms of how people quantify the arts and culture, because when you start looking at the creative sector, and that involves film and digital, and people working in the creative industries, that jumps to, the latest stats show that it jumps to 71.4 billion pound to the economy. There's incredible growth, 60% growth since 2004 in this particular sector. But one of the points that I'm going to try and make in terms of the life cycle of events is that I believe that this sector is getting increasingly crowded and saturated um, with the whole notion of, of, of cities seeing culture and the concept of culture as a real strong growth area. Uh, so, for example, music festivals, 2011, you had 30 cancelled in 2011. Um, most of them were paying events, but you saw a drop-off in terms of that. The sector that I was involved with, shopping centres, absolutely competitive area, terrified of online in terms of the implications of that. So you're seeing a real kind of trend there as they battle to have an online presence in terms of one how can events be part of that? But you're also seeing as a result of that some issues in terms of how events are defined. So, events. I've kind of categorized them into three categories, three basic categories. The first stage, profile and brand building. The second stage, a real drive to create audience numbers and, and as a footfall driver. And the third stage is a very clear trend to a return on investment. So what do I mean by that, profile and brand building? So the early stage of a center's de development is where they usually have money to spend, to dish out, and to be able to try to get their product synonymous with 
their brand. The measurement there very clearly is PR and the AVE, the equivalent price it would cost them to advertise in TV, newspapers, etc. That's the main measurement in the early stages. And the easiest way of doing that and the simplest way is bring on a celebrity, bring on someone that, that mirrors that. The more exciting ways of people, of companies and, uh, that defined what their brand is far, far more and do events such as carnivals and, and, and what have you. So just some examples of that. Okay, great. Um, and then the second cycle is, is just to do with numbers. It's to do with demographics, footfall, and measuring that. And a lot of private-owned companies are, are very sophisticated in terms of that, in terms of measurements. They are able to understand audience numbers. If it's a paying event, it's dead simple because you can understand your customers and how, that, how they work um, because they pay you and it's straightforward. Free events, it's starting they're starting to become very much more quantifiable at this stage with footfall counters and rapidly now, which I'll come, come on to, path intelligence, which is using mobile phones to actually measure very accurately numbers, where people are going, how, they, how they're going there. So that's what I kind of say is the second stage. And the, the third stage is a pure return on investment. How is this investment in the events and culture and I feel, as I say, it's quite interesting because there was one, Marianne, I think, mentioned this analogy of, of, of a, a Zeppelin balloon parachuting cultural arts to the masses, you know. And I kind of believe that at times that was the position I was starting to get into in terms of this final phase, return on investment. That's what increasingly privately owned shopping centers are looking for. What is the actual return on investment? If we're spending 20,000, 30,000 pound on a particular event, how will that translate itself into shopping centers increase in sales in terms of people actually buying within those shopping centers? Uh, I mentioned about path intelligence. I think that's really interesting because the digital, I kind of think that's a multi-edged sword. And the interesting thing from a business point of view is that Basically, the concept there is that with, uh, with path intelligence, you can, you can manage, you can see exactly where people are going into, which shops, what, what they're following, which areas. You can make that work for you, but obviously, it's quite interesting in terms of that technology. So, in conclusion, I'm just kind of gonna say that uh, I think events, culture, are uh, absolutely fascinating, but increasingly, in an age where there's more and more demand and people are actually creating more and more culture, is there, is there um, a life cycle of events that we need to be aware of that can inform us all as practitioners, as artists, as promoters that we need to be aware of? That's it, thank you very much.